Hello my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, I hope you're all keeping very, very well out there. I do have a bit of a cold today, very stuffed up. It's that time of the year, isn't it? Um, especially if you're in Ireland, in lots of cold weather. Um, you know, lots of coughs, colds, flus, that kind of thing. So forgive me um, if I don't sound too well at the moment. Um, but look... Nonetheless, I'm going to crack on and have a little fun with a nice little video here. I have a lovely little painting I want to do. Again, now this is on a wide landscape again, very narrow but very wide. I got these canvases in um, Lidl's. Lidl's, I think Aldi's have them as well. They're lovely canvases, really good, heavy quality canvases. It's uh, 20, was it 23 inches by eight or ten i think it's something like that lovely wide format i'm going to do a lovely landscape it's, it's behind me here it's very similar to the one i done um about two weeks ago with the sheep the irish landscape with the sheep but only this one has a bit of um sunset kind of cloud and with some bright highlights on clouds and i have it here next to me um a bit of colour going through the land and a couple of sheep then kind of dotted around on the landscape. So I think it's because it's, even though it's such a small canvas, there's going to be a lot, a lot of stuff in it. Um, it just goes to show you that no matter what size your canvas, you can fit a lot of stuff into a smaller canvas. Even though you might look at this and think, well, it's only, you know, 10 inches high. You can fit a lot into 10 inches, to be quite honest, on a canvas like this. You can fit a lot of different things um, and subjects so this will be a nice learning tutorial i think again it's going to be almost going back to basics keeping it simple for the amateurs and the beginners out there but i will drill into a little bit of detail maybe with the clothes that's all everything else after that will be basic enough just simple uh, you know putting colors in mixing them together on the canvas that kind of thing nothing too complicated so let's have a bit of fun with this um and we'll see how we go. I have my padded up high this time because I'll never fit everything into the camera, into the video. If I have them side by side, it's just too wide. So my palette is up overhead. I'll have my reference photograph on the right, my canvas underneath. Okay, so that's it. I didn't prime this canvas. They're already well primed. They have a lovely primer on them and they're lovely and smooth. Um, so that's it. I've, I'm working on a big, big painting behind me here. It's about a metre by a metre. Um, it's been shipped over to the States. And I'd like your opinion on something. I'm not sure whether to, sh to ship the painting as it is with plywood on either side. It's a metre by a metre now, so a fairly big painting. Because that could get damaged in transit, you know. You know the way they kind of throw them into vans and trucks. Uh, they'll go on a plane or a ship, I'm not sure. But... It's a big canvas and it could get damaged. So I'm not sure whether to leave it as it is or to remove the canvas and roll it up and put it into a big tube, a big cardboard tube. Um, it's a dilemma. It's a dilemma because the last thing I want now is to be painting this big canvas, which takes a long, long time, and then having it getting torn or ripped or damaged or bent or broken or something like that in transit. Whereas if it's in a tube, it's solid and there's less chance of it getting broke or bent. Do you know what I mean? So it's a bit of a dilemma. I just don't know what to do yet. Um, I'll have to let the customer know. I would be inclined to roll this up and put it into a big tube, a metre long tube. It's about this high from the ground. Um, roll it up, put the stretcher bars in there with it and let them maybe stretch it back around and staple it on afterwards. It's just an idea that I have. I'm just not keen on sending big canvases like this um through post you know i'm just not keen there's a good chance it will get damaged or bent or something so let me know what you think if you do it yourself what do you recommend i would normally roll them up if they were very big but sometimes i've sold and sent big canvases um through shipping and they've arrived just fine but there's always that risk especially if you're spending so long painting a picture um there's always that risk. You don't want to be taking that chance. So I'm a little bit nervous. Let me know what you think, all right? Anyway, in the meantime, let's paint. Let's have a bit of fun painting this, okay? Don't go anywhere. 
Okay, you should be able to see the palette falling on the canvas. I hope this doesn't move now up and down or anything like that halfway through because this setup I have, this kind of holder for the camera, does tend to kind of move on its own a little bit up and down. So I hope it stays where it is. There's a reference photograph now. Isn't that beautiful? Lovely colours. Um, I'm kind of focusing a lot on the sky with this one. All right. And everything after the sky is just nice and simple, putting colours in like this, just throwing them on and having a bit of fun, OK? A couple of sheep around. We put a few extra around the place. This is just a very eye-catching scene, I think. So let's um, let's have a bit of fun. Now, I hope you can see that OK. Nice and bright and everything else. Let's go. I'm taking a big brush. Now, you don't have to use a big brush. I'm going to dampen that in some thinners. Just dampen it. Dry it with your tissue so it's barely, barely damp, OK? And let's take a little phthalo blue. And some white. I'll tell you what colours I have as I'm going along because I, I have a habit sometimes of pulling out extra colours that I might not need. Um, for instance, I have cadmium red here as well, but I don't know if I will need it. Maybe just for some oranges later. Um, but yeah, they're my colours. Look, I've white, Naples yellow, phthalo blue, magenta, burnt cyana, cadmium yellow pale, lamp black, burnt umber and cadmium red. They're my colours. Um, a nice colourful palette for a landscape like this. So let's take some phthalo blue and into that put a touch of magenta. Now, if you don't have magenta, you can use crimson. It's absolutely fine. We have a nice bit of a blue sky over here, don't we? And I'm putting this on now fairly dry, OK? It does not a lot of thinners in this. I just take tiny, tiny amounts of thinners. And as I'm going, I just tend to kind of drag the paint along into the canvas grain, all right? Sometimes I put on a very wet wash, but this canvas is fairly well primed, so I don't think I need to put on too much thinners on this. It's, it seems to be going along on the canvas nicely. So I'm gonna just put some blue on there. Um, I'm gonna just dampen my brush, give it a clean, just take some of the blue off with your tissue, pick up some white on its own, and lighten that as it comes down. You see, I still have blue on my brush, I'm mixing into the blue that's already there. A lot of people ask me, I get a lot of questions about this type of style. Um, sometimes, you know, I added little thinners for the primary color, but then when I'm lightening the color, I just take a little white on its own with the brush and just pop a little white in there with the brush like that, okay? That's how I work. I don't add thinners with every single color that I'm using. Especially if you're lightening a color with some white or something like that. Don't use any thinners, just pick up a little white and soften it in. Otherwise, the canvas will get too wet and too messy. Now, let me just clean that again. When I'm cleaning my brush, by the way, what I'm doing is I'm dipping it into my thinners, just like that, in and out, and then dry it on the tissue. That takes off most of the colour, the bulk of the colour. Now, I'm going to take a little magenta. OK, you see how thin that is? Just a tiny, tiny amount. Look, tiny amount. And then a little white. That thickens it up then, you see. I'm going to pop a little. Now, we don't have it on the photograph. I might just pop a little magenta in down at the bottom because if you look at the picture, it's very colourful, isn't it? So there's lots of different colours in there and I want to make it very, very colourful as well. So I go as far as there, I'm going to stop. Um, I'm going to put this brush down and go for a smaller brush because I'm going into some yellows. Now, if I try to clean this and go into some yellows with this colour on my brush, it's going to be very, very dirty and green. So I'm putting this down, get a clean brush. Any, look, I'm using a large stubby brush here, all right? Um, I sell these if you want to buy a set. There should be a link there somewhere for my website. Pop over there and then you'll get a set of three different sizes, okay? They're lovely and they've short handles. They're very, very nice for painting like this. I'm going to dampen this brush, dry it on some tissue quickly, go into some, Naples yellow, little touch of cadmium yellow, and then plenty of white, look, plenty of white. We have this lovely glow in the sky over here, don't we? And I'm going to put that in there, just like that. It even looks like almost a pure white, really, on the picture, doesn't it? A bit of white, just there. Then we're going to start making, um, now, we do have some clouds, some grey clouds. If you notice on this side, we have a lot of grey 
on this side we have sort of a grey with a bit of blue a bit of bright white going through them now the very important thing with a sky like this and this is so important okay try not to bring your yellow over into your blue because you will end up with a green you see that I have a, a mucky luminous kind of a green there now so you don't want that what you want to do is make a nice plum pinky plum color so let's take some magenta and a little touch of blue okay tiny touch of blue now not too much this is more pinky you see that and then you could add a touch of black if you wanted to or you could even use a touch of burnt umber but i'm going to try a little black this time and then a little more blue just keep adding tiny tiny amounts of each color until you feel like you have the color you want so i have a kind of a plummy sort of a color there and i'm going to add some white into that so i'm going for a very kind of warm gray you see that type of color it's a very warmish gray in fact i might even try a touch of burnt umber in this that will warm it even more and I know this is not exactly like what we have on the photograph, but look, we don't have to copy the photograph. We can make this completely our own. I want to soften this color into the yellow. You see the way I'm going around in circles and I'm softening that color back into the yellow. Go up and around like that. Create these nice big rich clouds. So there's a very good reason why I'm starting with this kind of pinky color first. I can put I can use the pinky color as my base and then I can put nice kind of rich dark gray blue grays into this without it mixing into the yellows if you understand what I mean let me take another touch of black perhaps so you see the tiny amounts of paint I'm using look there's hardly any paint on my brush at all that's all you need you don't have to go crazy using huge blobs of color because all you're doing really is just wasting paint you're just wasting paint unnecessarily and come on think of climate change let's try and look after the planet and spare your paints you don't have to go wasting paint because it all goes in the bin later when you're trying to scrape it off your palette doesn't it so look i have a nice little color coming through here now a little bit down there just to bring it around and down and you can see we've kept our lovely bright yellow glow in one corner and we haven't made any kind of muddy colors so let's go across with some of this um, i'm just going to bring it across ever so slightly just here and there um, i'm going to pop a little bit of it up in the blue sky here and there just to show where my clouds are going to be and the good thing about this is you're using complementary colors and you're, you're helping your composition by bringing some of that pinky color over to this side of the painting as well so it's very good for your composition to bring colors across your sky like this don't try not to have very different colors on either side of your sky um, you know if you have a bit of pink on one side bring it across slowly just add a little bit of it here and there and that just helps the painting it brings the sky together basically it brings a sort of harmonious feel to the sky now with that color still in your brush let's pick up some of this blue let's just go into some phthalo blue and some magenta and i'm going to start adding a bit of black into this so i'm going to start going for a deep blue here now a deep kind of a purpley blue a warm purple and i'm just going to start putting that in here and there and again i'm not copying this sky exactly okay i'm just going to add my own clothes as i go the only reason i'm looking at the reference photograph is for colors that's all but you can add as many or as little clothes in as you want into this okay you don't have to go copying your photograph exactly it's nice to make it your own as well i think okay now just do a bit at a time and stop you don't have to go crazy putting tons of clothes in all at once just a little bit at a time just to be a little bit on the cautious side 
Now, don't forget plenty of that magenta. That warm colour will really help. So I'm going to go up here now, you see, into this one and create some nice clouds up here. And my idea, my, my, my technique for painting clouds is basically to go around in little circles. That's all. Just go around in little circles, go up and down, sort of make it very random. And that gives you very natural sort of clouds. You know, when I, sometimes I look at YouTube, um, look at land, people painting landscapes and that kind of thing. And sometimes, you know, you can sit there for a half hour watching someone painting one cloud, just one little cloud on its own, like this. And it gets very tiring to look at. And I get very impatient and I just turn off because some artists... I know they're fantastic, they're great, they're very good artists, but they, sometimes I find a lot of artists just spend far too much time painting little things. Um, they take much too long and it just becomes tiresome. And, you know, you tend to kind of switch off after a while, I think, in your mind. If you're watching someone spending two hours painting a sky, I think you just tend to switch off. I much prefer to be spontaneous like this and just... Grab some paint and go for it. Just pull a lot of stuff in. Don't be shy. Now, a little bit of blue into that. Let's get some blue. Look, I'm just popping a bit of blue in with my brush. Take a tiny bit, soften it away, and then just pop it in with your brush. Don't be shy. Come on, it's only a sky. It's not going to hurt us if we get it wrong. Don't be shy. Just grab a bit of paint and go for it. Bit of blue here, bit of blue there. And I always keep my highlights till the very end. When you're painting a sky with oils, it's a good idea to keep all of your highlights until the very last minute. Your very bright white clouds, keep them till the very last minute. Okay? There we are. Look, a bit of blue here, a bit of blue there. So I'm basically just kind of concentrating on the dark sides of my clouds, the shadowed sides. So I'm just going to sit back for a second and have a look. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. I'll go for a slightly darker shade now. The last shade being the darkest. Little bit of black, little bit of blue, a bit of magenta. I'm just gonna pop a little touch of that in. As you get to the horizon line, clouds will always get very thin and very narrow. Just remember that. And just drag your colours along like this look. Now I will take more magenta and just maybe even touch a burnt umber as well. And just make these ones slightly warmer. As they come over by that bright yellow spot in the sky, they do tend to get a bit warmer in shade, in hue, let's say. So a little bit warmer, and just maybe pop one or two in, just to break up that white, that bright yellowy sky over there, just to break it up just a little. Now I'll stop there, take a soft brush, and just soften, soften those out a little. Just to take away some of those brush strokes, nothing fancy, let's just, you know, we're here to have a bit of fun, come on, let's make it fun. Next I'm going to do those bright, nice, whitey clouds that we have. Now I'll clean this brush, I'm going to use this brush again. I think it's a pretty good brush. Um, the hairs are kind of splayed out, which is what you want for painting clouds. You can use a small brush, or you could, you could even use a palette knife if we want as well. But I'll try this brush first. And I'm going to grab some white paint, just to make sure I have plenty on my palette. And let's go into our white. We want to make a very warm cloud. All right, you can see the sunlight hitting the clouds. So what I would do is take a little white, some Naples yellow. Don't be shy with the Naples yellow. And I would take a touch of maybe cadmium red look. And that will give you a very warm, sunlit kind of a sky, a cloud in the sky. It's almost like a warm pink, a bright, bright warm pink. And let's just go along like this and pop little highlights on our clouds. You see, I'm just sort of dabbing with the corner of the brush. 
And don't worry about making this too perfect because we can soften all of this with our soft blender brush later. You see what I'm doing? Look, I'm just sort of swirling the brush around, getting the colour in. Now you'll need to clean just the tip of your brush because you can see how that's picked up some of the dirt, the dirty colour. Just give that a rub and go back in. Go back into your colour again. Um, and pop a little bit down here like that. So you don't really have to go and use, you know, small, tiny brushes for painting clouds like this. You can just grab a big brush and do a little bit of dabbing or whatever. It's entirely up to yourself. Now, I'm going to try some magenta and some Naples yellow. And then a bit of white. You could try that colour as well. That makes it even a warmer shade. Look, a bit of pink. Some nice sort of a pink in there, isn't it? Warm pink. Let's pop a little bit in. And all these little tiny changes in colour will make a huge difference, I promise. It's just, you know, we want to add a little bit of warmth into the sky. You see that bit of pink even there now at the bottom? That's nice, you see? That just added a little bit of warmth. <coughs> Excuse me. A bit more Naples yellow, a little bit more magenta. We're getting warmer again. As we come across, it's always going to get warm. And I'm going to pop a little bit of that warm shade in up around there. Maybe a little here and there. And just add a little into this dark cloud here because we need to break that up, don't we? Just to break it up a little. I've been very loose with this now. I'm not really taking too much notice to where the colour is going. I'm just popping my brush on and seeing what happens, look. It may go completely wrong and we may end up making a mess, but it doesn't matter. Let's just try it and have a bit of fun. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologise. I have a bit of a cough today. <coughs> now, let's take a soft brush and I'm just going to soften all of this you see the way I'm just kind of, I'm flicking the brush around in little circles, just small circles, just to soften the colours in just a little bit, but not too much. I'm not over softening. I oh, was in that lovely, lovely little sky. Again, I sit back. Now, I did spend quite a bit of time on this sky. I normally wouldn't spend this much time on a sky. As you probably know, I like to get skies done quickly and keep them simple, but I wanted to just go into a little bit of detail in this sky for you. I suppose just to push you a little bit. Now, some Naples yellow, lots of white. Again, a very whitey yellow, very whitey it's warm white, let's say. And, okay, let's just pop a little bit in here and there. And again, we're really catching some of those highlights. And we can put one or two just up here. Maybe just light just catching some of those clouds up in the corner as well. And I'm using the flat of the tip of my knife just to go around in little swirls. Just to help kind of soften that back into the cloud a little bit, you see. Just a little bit here and there. And just go along the bottom. Scrape a little bit across there. Now, we don't have to do any more than that. We really don't if we don't want to. I'm just going to pop a little bit of bright colour, some white with some Naples yellow again, in here, just to brighten up this area. Um, I suppose to show a really bright part of the sky, just showing through over here.
and I think that's fine. I don't think we need to do any more to the sky there. That's fine. Let's stop at the sky. Just leave it like that. And away we go with the rest of the painting. Let's keep the rest of the painting now nice and simple. Nice and simple. So I spent 20 minutes doing that sky. 20 minutes. Some artists would have spent two hours or one hour. Two hours maybe. No, I just like to get things going. Let's start putting in some of this nice land we have. We have a nice darkness over here, don't we? Um, I think I might actually go back and just keep using this small, medium kind of flat brush, all right? Any medium-sized brush you have will do fine. I'm going to take some black, and I'm going to go into some... Now, we do have... You see the way the light comes across the land? So I'm going to be careful with this. Some burnt cyanide. And I'll take some Naples yellow. And I'm going to start with that kind of a deep grey, browny grey colour. Okay. I'm going to leave a bit of a gap. And then I'm going to come across. And come down like that. So you can see where I'm leaving my gap now for the light to come down, yes? Let's take a bit of cadmium red just to warm it slightly. Because we have a lovely dark against the light down there, don't we? A lovely dark area over on that side. Bit more cadmium red. Touch of white, perhaps. So the colours are getting kind of softer as they go across. Now I'll dip my brush in my turpentine, okay? You can see it's just wet. I dipped it in. And I'm rubbing it on the tissue just to take off the bulk of that colour. Just the bulk of the colour. And I grab some more Naples yellow from my palette. Or from my tube. Put it on my palette there. Now, let's go into some Naples yellow. And a touch of burnt cyanide. I want to pop that in there like that. Look. Just thick paint on your brush. And then I'm going to soften that into all of this here. You see that? Very gently. I'm hardly touching the canvas now with my brush. Now give it a clean because it gets dirty. You want to keep the colour sort of fresh. And let's again go in here and just refine the tip of the mountain. And then soften it down. Like so. Then I take some cadmium yellow with some Naples yellow and some white and come down here and just pop that in at the bottom and soften it up again. You know, the trick I find with oil painting is about softening colours. It's all about softening those colours together with your brush, okay? Now, if you don't want to try and do this, you can just leave it. It's completely up to yourself. Um, if you may find this is a little more difficult for you to try and achieve, you can just leave it, really. But I like to um, I like to challenge myself a little bit with things like this. Now I'll bring that across and just leave that sort of merge together nicely over there. So look, we have a nice light coming down across the land. A nice soft light. We don't have to go crazy with that. Just a little suggestion. I'm going to come across and start darkening my colour over here. Just a little, with a bit of magenta in the brown. Maybe a touch of thalo blue and white as well. Just off in the distance there. Remember, adding a little bit of blue will give you a bit of depth and distance in your painting. And the colours are just mixing together nicely. They're already kind of changing shades, you see. It looks like we have a lot going on in the distance, but we don't. It's just slightly different colours making you think that there's stuff going on off in the distance when there's not. It's just a couple of brush strokes, look. It just adds a bit of interest into the painting. I 
I'll add a little bit of that blue as well down at the bottom of this and that will just help create a kind of a shadow area but a highlighted shadow down at the base of this then I'll take a touch of magenta maybe with some burnt umber we pop a little bit of that down, down here so you can see I'm just softening colour together. That's all I'm doing. It's quite simple. Now we start going into some, maybe some greens, some cyanides, that kind of stuff. So let's just clean the brush quickly. Let's take some cadmium yellow and a little, I'm going to go with black. Just to keep it a little bit on the warm side. If you use yellow with blue, it gives you a cool green. If you use yellow with black, it gives you a warm green. A sort of a warm kind of an olive green so a really nice green for a summer scene or forest or whatever but it keeps it warm the black who would have thought black and yellow but they do make a lovely combination just popping a little touch of the green in here and there look just swishing it along with your brush and I'm going to start making it cooler up there so let's take a little cadmium yellow with some phthalo blue and then we start making a little cooler and you can see i'm using little amounts of paint it's a very very small amount of paint that i'm using okay how's that looking so far i hope you're following along nicely so we come up into this area and you can see there's lovely browns and siennas up there let's get some burnt sienna mix it with some of this black that we have and we have a nice little bit of a valley coming down into that don't we as it comes down it's going to be more sienna so maybe sienna with some cadmium yellow even that will give a nice warm sienna coming down here into the valley and as they come down into the middle they kind of disappear and they merge together don't they so let's just pop a little touch of cyanide then with the tip of our brushes just through here and there look just to let that look like it's merging with different fields off in the distance so i'll take some thinners at this point and start thinning out my paint look just to make it go that little bit further that's all And also, if you wanted, you could actually use a palette knife for this as well. That would be a good idea. Um, just to add some texture into all of this. Let me just get my reference border back on here. And a little bit of black with red down here. Isn't it just amazing what you can fit into just a 10 inch canvas? You know, you can fit a lot in if you really want to. You can just, you know, put little bits in. It's very deceiving. When you look at a canvas that's only 8 or 10 inches high, you think to yourself, I'm not going to fit much into this. It's going to be very difficult to fit a landscape into this canvas. But then when you actually start doing it, you realise it's amazing what you can fit on a small canvas. Let me just fill in this area here with my brush. I'm scraping it in just to cover the white of the canvas, that's all. Because I don't like putting on thick layers of paint. I much prefer to start off with nice thin layers and build it up, make it thicker and thicker as it goes. For me, that's what, that's what works best. So there we go. Now, I know we have a lot of dark going across here, but we're now going to use our palette knives to get some nice, rich, bright, cut, you know, very striking colours across the landscape. Let's get some cadmium yellow, mix it in with that green, take a bit of Naples yellow. With a sort of a bright pasty pasty kind of a green and look i'm just going to start putting in the suggestion of light sort of coming across catching the land here and there softening it in and this involves a lot of scraping as well my friends okay now let me just check the exposure on this that's better. I'm going to now take some Naples yellow 
with some burnt cyana, just a little burnt cyana. And I want to pop in a nice bright area. And allow your knife to just drag the paint across the canvas, hitting the canvas grain. There, just like that, look. And you can just scrape it around side to side to soften it in, you see? So we have that nice light already coming across the landscape, don't we? Now we'll try some cadmium yellow with some brighter white colour. There we go. Pop that in. Let's go over here. Cadmium yellow with some white. And let's just kind of drag that hazy part there down and across the landscape. So now we have... You can see we have a nice light starting to form on the landscape just there, don't we? And what I love about using the palette knife for this is the palette knife kind of creates that bit of detail for you, you know? It takes a lot of the work out of having to use the brush to create little bits of detail. The palette knife is wonderful for doing that. I'm going to go for a nice dark green and I'm going to come down here and just start adding a little bit of that dark green into the landscape. Pick up some Naples yellow, perhaps. Start softening. And we can use our soft brush then, you see, to soften all of this in. And just help create different textures. See, I've picked up a bit of cadmium red there as well. Just popping that in like that. And we scrape our palette knife across, moving the paint, and you can see it's missing the canvas grain, which is nice. That's what we want. Then take our soft brush and let's just soften things around. Look, let's have a bit of fun. Bring that nice mist down into your fields, soften everything along. You see how easy that was? I just find doing things like this, it's just so easy sometimes with a palette knife. And you can create so much texture very, very quickly. And that's why I really do love using the palette knife a lot with landscapes like this. Now some cadmium yellow and some burnt sienna. I'm going to do the very same effect up here, look. So what I want to do is kind of show the direction of the land coming down. So I'm following the direction of the land coming down at an angle, you see what I mean? Always follow that direction. And that tells you the lay of the land. It gives you that direction that you want. Let's try some cadmium yellow on its own. Lots of thick impasto work here now. Impasto techniques, as they call it. Lots of paint on your knife. Drag it through and have a bit of fun. So you can see we have a nice direction coming down into the middle of our landscape, you see? Just, it looks nice. And I love the way the light kind of reflects the sunlight over here coming across and catching the land. Isn't that wonderful? Now, I'm going to start putting in some dark. Let's get some dark for a change. So some nice contrast. Burnt umber, some cadmium yellow, maybe a hint of black. So we're going for a kind of a dark, muddyish green colour. Then I go into a nice dark colour, black and some phthalo blue with some cadmium yellow. That'll give us a very, very blacky, blacky kind of a green. And I'm just going to start up here and just kind of swoop it across down here. You can see my, my, my knife is just kind of going very flowy. I'm very flowy with my knife, just being nice and loose. Not going straight like this, just be nice and flowy. Look, drag it across and leave it go at a nice curve. There we are. Look at that. Now, now we're getting somewhere. 
And the next thing I'm going to do, okay, I'm happy with that. The next job is our fan brush. Let's get a nice fan brush. Make sure it's a little damp, that's all. I'm going to start putting in some highlights with grass. Again, keeping it simple. Titanium white, little, just a little titanium white. Plenty of cadmium yellow. And a little thinners. I like to add a little thinners on my fan brush when I'm doing um, grasses and things like that. It just helps the paint stick a little bit better. Let's just go like this, look. So because it's the foreground now, it's kind of coming closer to us, there's going to be a little bit more definition in the grass and stuff like that. Leave it softening away into the distance like this. So you're giving it a slight sort of mysterious feel, aren't you? A little bit of cadmium, or sorry, a little bit of burnt cyanide with some Naples yellow. Again, just to soften the colour just a little bit. So it softens off over here into the distance. And now I'm going to start going a little bit brighter and a bit more defined because it's so close to us. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow down there with the burnt cyanide and a little white. Now this time I'm going to just start flicking. I'm flicking it upwards like this, look. And you may find it a little difficult doing this wet on wet. Um, I like to paint all my paintings wet on wet, especially when I'm doing grasses and stuff like this, because the colours sort of, they soften in together, making it really nice. I like the soft feeling I get by painting wet into wet like this. So already we have a nice little area here little grassy area for some sheep to graze or whatever. Leave it disappear off into the distance over here, look. Now I will do the same thing with some black, just black, and I'm going to just start popping it in over here. Just to help merge the front into the back, okay? You see, I want to merge the front sort of into the back as it tapers off. Maybe get some cyanide. Perhaps even look, some Naples yellow. You can pop some Naples yellow in there just to give a hint of little flowers or grasses or anything, anything you wish. Look, you can put whatever you like into a painting like this. It's completely up to yourself. Now I'm moving to a small pointy brush. I'm going to just put a little suggestion of a little fence on this side going into the photograph or into the, sorry into the painting rather it's not a photograph a little small fence a suggestion of a little fence going off into the distance over there now they will get thicker as they come closer to you And they'll get slightly thinner as they go off into the distance, you see? Like that. Then we can suggest a little bit of some wires and things between them. Some of them may be broken. And some not. Now we do need some highlights on those because they look quite flat at the moment, don't they? So let's try some Naples yellow and just pop a little highlight along the ends of some of those. Down one side it's kind of a whitey Naples yellow type of a, a colour, okay? Just something bright, that's all. Anything you have that's bright, just to give it a little light. And we can also use a little touch of the light blue 
for along the tops of the wires. You can see how simple I'm trying to keep this. Um, I really do try to keep things nice and simple for you and for myself. I like keeping things simple. Um, you know, I don't, I don't particularly enjoy going into lots of detail, particularly in painting. Sometimes I, I would, if I was painting a still life like some fruit or something like that, then yes, I would like to go into some detail. But for the most part, to be quite honest, I like just sort of giving a nice impression of a scene rather than trying to show every little blade of grass and all of that kind of thing. I just don't like it. It's just not my type of style, if you understand what I mean. Nice little fence going along there. And we could take some white if we wanted and suggest one or two little flowers here and there. And all this is just bringing the eye around the painting. That's all I'm doing. Little clubs of flowers, little daisies or whatever you want to put in there. It really doesn't matter. You could even get some cadmium red and suggest some little red bunches of flowers here and there as well. And it's just adding little touches of colour to your painting. That's all it is. Okay, how's that? All we have left to do is paint a few sheep. And that took us 40 minutes to paint all of this lovely little scene. 40 minutes, everyone. Imagine that. Which is why I like to keep things simple. You know, I could have easily spent two hours painting this. But then I think to myself, you know, do I really want to be going into lots of detail, making something very complicated? I, I don't think I really want to do that. Let's start putting in some little sheep. Now, this brush might not be the best, but let's try it. All we can do is try, isn't that right? Let's go here. I'm going to start just with the bodies first and we can use a pointy brush then to refine the little things okay just let's just get the bodies started another one and we could paint another one across here perhaps standing by the fence or something like that okay now what you could always do as well is suggest little ones in the distance so for instance we could go up here and suggest little small ones in the distance perhaps there's a little group of them off in the distance and then we just kind of start suggesting the little details now, you see, the problem is the photograph I'm using here is very, there's, it's very hazy, so I can't really see details. Um, so I'm just going to just add a few little lines here and there. And again, it's just a suggestion, that's all. A very loose suggestion of some sheep in a field. And you may not even be able to see, you know, the faces and all of that kind of thing. But I will just put a tiny, tiny little suggestion. Um, of them, just here and there. Little touches of black, here and there. And perhaps a little bit of dark underneath them as well so it's very difficult then you see to actually see the details but you can see it's just a tiny suggestion and then perhaps I don't know I might try a little palette knife here and just try to add a touch 
with the knife very very bright touch of white just here and there because the color is mixing on the canvas so i just want to get a nice bright a nice bright paint a nice bright white over some of these and do bear in mind when you're using thick paint like this it's going to take very long to dry it'll take probably two or three weeks for this white to dry on a canvas so just be careful you know just take your time and i think that's all right i don't look i don't want to be going into loads of detail with the sheep because they're so small on this canvas it's impossible to see any details or to even make out any details on the head for example or anything like that so i'm not going into a huge amount of detail on these it is just a suggestion that's all it's just to add a bit of a little bit of interest into the landscape look we've done a few around off in the distance just for fun and if anybody asks you and they say what's all that oh, so sure, look it's just a couple of sheep that's all it's just some sheep off in the distance no no big deal they just mess it up a little bit and i think that's that's all right i'm i'm happy enough with that with that my friends i'm going to say thank you so so much for joining me i hope i've uh, opened up your mind just a little bit to keeping things simple i hope you've enjoyed watching and um you know come back next week and we'll paint something completely different it could be a sunset could be a still life could be anything i don't kind of generally plan out tutorials i like to just sit down on the day and say i'm going to paint this today or i'm going to try that i like to just sort of go with the flow so my friends there's another one done i think that's quite nice i'm 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 very happy with that i might just kind of do a bit of work on the sheep and maybe soften the painting just a little bit make it more pronounced you see what i mean just but there we go it's entirely up to you what you would like to add and what you would like to leave out so we've another painting done and that's very similar i'm going to grab my other painting which i did if you just bear with me for one moment now this is the other one we did and you can see they're very similar aren't they so we have that one and with that one they're both very similar but quite different aren't they the colors with that one and then that one so there we go they'd make a nice set on the wall wouldn't they they'd make a lovely little set lovely set of paintings of an irish landscape and there we go my friends thank you so so much for joining me it's been fantastic sitting here and having a chat talking to yourselves um let me know what you think and let me know what you think about shipping that big painting should i send it as a big canvas or should i roll it i'd love to hear your thoughts um thank you so much for your help thank you for your support thank you my patrons um i'm working on one for patreon that's why i'm taking so long you haven't seen me on patreon for a week or two i'm working on a really nice one and i want to edit this really nice it's a big one so god bless i'll see you very soon um, and happy painting i'll see you uh, i'll see you everyone take care